All of this is a Mercedes Benz, except that it isn't. Now, if you look around the car on the front, on the back, on the inside, you'll see plenty of Mercedes Benz badges. And actually, on this badge in particular, it even says Mercedes Benz. But what this actually is, is an AMG. And in today's video, I'm going to explain what I mean by that. And in order to do that, I'm going to go through a bit of a history on AMG and talk about how this, the SLS, fits into that story. First, a bit of background on AMG as a brand. See, it was originally started by two German engineers, Ernhard Melcher and Hans Werner Aufrecht. They were developing racing engines for what was then Daimler-Benz, obviously now is Mercedes-Benz. And over the course of their relationship, they moved on from just developing racing engines to fully tuning some of Mercedes-Benz or Daimler's cars. And Mercedes-Benz took such an interest in the brand that in 2005, they actually bought them out entirely and made it Part of the Mercedes-Benz family. So how did it work between these two brands that eventually became one? Well, traditionally, Mercedes-Benz would design and build a road car. They would hand that road car over to AMG's mentalists who would fiddle around with it, add more power and some other bits and bobs, and then they would hand back a much more extreme version of that ordinary road car. But with the SLS AMG, the story was very different. See, this car is actually the first car that AMG designed and built entirely from scratch. And that's why I think this thing is so incredibly important in AMG's history. Now, in designing this car, AMG spared no expense. As you can see by this insanely long landing strip of a hood. I mean, look, I can't even, if I stand in the front, I can't actually really reach the front of the hood. It's insanity and underneath it it's even more insane because what you have is a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated v8 something that's quite interesting actually is though the engine is in the front this is a mid-engine car because the entirety of that monstrosity of a v8 sits behind the front axle now the v8 is hand built just like every other amg engine and you know that by this little plaque that you have here in the center now, back in 2010, when this car was released, that V8 produced 563 brake horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. Now, the responsibility of handling that insane power was given to the rear wheels exclusively, and it was driven by a seven-speed double-clutch automatic gearbox. Now, all of that meant that the SLS AMG did zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. So it could definitely hold its own against supercars of the time. In fact, when this was released, this became the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 on any road car. It was more powerful than the Lamborghini Gallardo, which had two additional cylinders. It actually had one more horsepower than the 458 Italia, which also had a naturally aspirated V8. Now, one more doesn't sound like much, but if you get one of these and your buddy has a 458, uh, that one horsepower is plenty to be able to hold over his head. But the thing with the SLS is, Horsepower figures and zero to 60 times, those are great for children. But let's be honest, all car enthusiasts are really children at heart, myself included. But the significance of this car isn't in its performance. It's in what it meant for AMG as a brand moving forward and its place in the Mercedes-Benz family. Now to tune cars is all great, but to be able to build your own car and for that car to be good enough to be badged and sold under the name of Mercedes-Benz is quite an accomplishment. See, in the recent years before the SLS's release, if Mercedes-Benz needed a supercar, they had to go outside of the family to have one designed. Think SLR McLaren. With the SLS, AMG was basically telling Mercedes-Benz, you needn't go anywhere to have a supercar designed. We've got it handled. And they handled it in the same extreme fashion that you would expect from any AMG. So everything about this car is extreme. You have this dramatic red glowing engine start button and for whatever reason, if that doesn't work, you have a second option. You can insert the key and start the engine there. Most of the interior is pretty typical Mercedes-Benz, but it does have this beautiful instrument cluster. It's got this nice aluminum appeal to it. Always reminds me of a Pagani for some reason. And of course, elephant in the room, it has these beautiful gullwing doors paying homage to the 300 SL. Now, the SLS did eventually come out with a convertible variant, but I wouldn't bother with one of those. They have regular, conventional, boring person doors, and you really want the gull wings. And it's not just because they're dramatic, but it's also because if you're a bit taller, it gives you a bit more headroom. You have this little 
bubble of space. The really cool thing about the Gullwing doors is they come with explosives. Because if you think about it, if this car were to roll over in some horrible accident, you couldn't exactly open the doors. Well, AMG's thought of that and the best thing that they could think to do was to blow off the door. They actually installed sensor activated charges on the bolts holding the door in place. So if the computers and sensors detect a rollover, it'll blast those bolts out and then you can just remove the door and get out. I mean, how, how cool is that? How many cars, even nowadays, come with explosives built in? Who doesn't want a car that blows itself up when you roll it over? Now, in the years that the SLS was on sale, they shifted about 2,700 of them, and they had an original MSRP of around $220,000. Now, in today's market, higher mileage coupes are still selling for around $200,000 or more. They actually get up to over a million dollars if you find low mileage examples of the Black Series. Now, convertibles are definitely selling on the lower end. They're in the low to mid $100,000 range. And I think a big part of that is because they don't have these gold wing doors. So if you're looking for a collector's car, you want an SLS, definitely go for the coupe. Now the SLS was replaced by what I'm sure you've heard of the AMG GT. And that's really the legacy of this car. It showed the world in Mercedes-Benz what AMG could do if they had free reign to build their own supercar. And what I think it did was it solidified a future where you can walk into a Mercedes-Benz showroom and you can see some proper sports cars and supercars. In the words of Jeremy Clarkson, with this SLS, they'd made the thinking man's supercar. Now that's all I have for this video. I wanna say a huge thank you to Iluso in Costa Mesa for loaning me this beautiful SLS AMG. This car is actually on sale right now. So I will leave links in the description to their website, their social media, as well as the listing for this car for you to go ahead and check it out if it's still available at the time that you watch this video. Now leave me a comment below with your thoughts on the SLS, on the video. If you have one, share your story. How many miles does it have? What spec? I love when people share stories about their cars below. It's a great, uh, a great engaging experience that I really enjoy. Leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's a great way to support the channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care.